All right, let's talk about blueprints. So I'm actually playing a level right now where I decided to create this little scene of like, a, I don't know, Old West bandit camp or something like that, a little hideout over here. So I just threw in some of the like cliff uh, faces in here. And I just thought like, oh, it'd be kind of nice to have this as kind of a sunset kind of you know evening scene here. And we'll put a little fire pit in there. But I really wanted the firelight to be flashing up onto the rock walls. So if I hit the escape key to get out of the game mode over here, you can kind of see what it looks like without that. It's like, this is what it looks like. Here, let me hit the G key to hide all the game elements. Um, that looks okay, but we're not getting that kind of cool lighting effect there on the rock. So you'll notice that what I've done here in the scene is taken the fire effect out of the starter content and just dropped it in there. Just drag and drop right from the uh, starter content fire effects, the little particle effects in there. So that's what's creating the actual flame and smoke over here, but it's not really putting out much light, expect, except for the light that it's just generating by glowing. Uh, to get that flickering light, I need to actually write some code for that. Now, and if I were doing this in a cinematic, I could just drop in a light and then animate the intensity of the light going on forward, that sort of thing. There's other things to do, but if I wanted this to show up in the gameplay mode, like here, if I hit play, I've got this like light flickering as long as I play the game. So that's a very, very simple bit of code that we can do just to show you what blueprints are and how they work. So what I'm going to do is, um, actually, you know what, I'm going to hit the G key again so I can see that I'm going to find my blueprint blueprint there. That's my blueprint. I'm just going to hit delete. I'm not deleting it, the code. I just deleted it from the scene. It's still there. If I hold the control and spacebar button down, then I've opened up the uh, content browser. And here's mine right there, BP first flicker. So there it is. If I wanted to add it back into the scene, I still can. There it is right there, but I'll delete that again. And I will control and spacebar to open this up. And I've just created a folder, my blueprints, and I've just got the one blueprint that I created in here. So let's create a new one in here. We're going to just redo this one that I just did from scratch. So there's a lot of different ways to start making a blueprint. You can come up to this little button up over here on the top, pop that open and say a new empty blueprint class. You can make a level blueprint from here. You can uh, open up the content browser and right click and find the blueprint menu over here. And there's a whole bunch of them in here that you can choose from, or you can just come up here and grab blueprint class up at the top. So I'm just gonna grab that sort of shortcut button. Now what blueprints are, basically the code in a blueprint, the parent class basically is what kind of stuff is it inheriting. So right now, actor is kind of at the bottom of the chain. That's the simplest one that doesn't have any of the kind of elements. It's kind of like, it's not too different than when you're starting up a new level and it says, do you want to start a, a 3D person game, a third person game or a first person game, a top down game, a racing game or whatever. If you, when you pick one of those, you're just picking up some stuff that's kind of already ready to go for you. And that's very much what's happening here with the actor class. So if I just grab the actor, it's giving me a, a default blueprint actor, and we get, want to give this a name, and it's a good idea to get the, the naming convention BP down, underscore, and we'll just call this Flickr. And the reason why, hit enter to give it a name. If you decide you want to change the name, you can double click on it, or remember F2 is always a great way to kind of jump right to that. Um, the BP blueprint is a good naming convention that you can find things for. So you've had a whole bunch of blueprints to your scene and you're trying to find like, where was that flickering fire blueprint? Where did I put that? What did I call that? If you just type in BP in your search engine over here, then all of the blueprints in your scene that you've named with BP will show up. So that's a really good naming convention you'll see. Um, okay, so to get into this blueprint, I'm gonna just double click on it right here in the content browser and then it's gonna open up this other window for us here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and you can leave this open. You can close this. If you close this window, it's okay. It's just right there in your content browser. Just double click, open it up again. Uh, although sometimes it, when you do it that way, it hides the whole rest of the browser. But what I'm going to have us do is just dock this up here. I like to do that um, when we're going back and forth between things. So if you grab the little um, file folder tab over here and just pop it up here right next to the scene, um, that way you can go to your scene and you can go to your blueprint and you can have a bunch of these. You can have materials open and you can have character animations. You can have all different kinds of things up here on different tabs and just jump around between them. So that way you're not having to constantly open them up in the content browser. Now we're going to come to the viewport tab first. It should bring you to that initially if you're not opening and closing it like I just was. Here's the viewport tab. What the viewport tab is where things that are going to be in the scene want to live. So say you're making a door that opens when the character walks up to it. Well, the mesh that you would need to add to make the door visible on the screen would go in here in the viewport. So what do we want to add in our viewport? What do we want to be in our level? Not all the code stuff that we're going to add here in a second. That's not going to be visible. That's going to be under the hood. What's the hood? 
Well, in this case, we want to add a light, right? We want the light to be flickering. So we're gonna add a component to our scene. You can see this little components window over here. What's in here? Right now, it's just the default scene root is what this is. That's basically just like the center of the universe. That's what this thing is over here. We wanna add something to our scene. So I'm gonna click the add button and I could search, I could type in light or point light, but it's right here at the top of the list in common choices. So there it is right there. We can just grab a point light from our scene. And if I scooch it up a little bit, you can see that it's right there. There's a little light bulb on there. Uh, that's the, the thing that will be casting the light. Now we won't see this little light bulb icon. That's just the icon here in the editor. This is the source of our light. But let's come over here to the details palette over here and find intensity. I'm going to just drop this intensity down a little bit because we're going to be pushing it up with our code. So I'm just going to type in 1000 in here and enter that um, It's our default. So the lowest it will go is 1000 lumens or watts or whatever this is. Uh, under the light color here, let's just go and click on this little swatch and we'll just maybe grab a more orangey color or something like that's fine and we'll say okay. Now all of these things can be animated. Any any field that you can see here that's named in any one of these things, you can animate those, you can get those the, the values of these, you can change the values of these. The, you know, the code, the blueprints have a whole lot of power, but we're gonna keep it really simple for this one. But before we move on, we wanna notice that this little guy up here has turned yellow with a question mark in it. And that's basically saying, hey, you've made some changes, do you want to save those changes? Do you want me to compile that? And a lot of times you'll be, if you forget to do this, um, you'll be trying to do something later on in in your blueprint it's like why is this not showing up or why is that that uh, variable not there or whatever what's well, because you haven't told it that you want to keep it yet all you have to do is click on that little button you get the green checkbox it says yay compiling was successful terrific down over here and you're good to go so we're going to skip over the construction script right now we won't use that for a while that's basically creating things in a blueprint that are built before the level begins but we're going to have our stuff start when the game level begins so we're going to click on the event graph this is where events happen and they give you these three by default and two of these we don't need event tick is something that it checks every frame of the game let's get rid of that one we don't need that one um, and then uh, begin overlap is if the an actor or a character or something like that over you know stands on top of the thing but we don't need that right now but we are going to use event begin play now you don't have to delete those they're fine just sitting there doing nothing but we just did that uh, let's go ahead and drag off the execute pin over there and as soon as we do that it's going to say oh okay uh, well, what do you want? And there's a whole lot of choices in here. So what we want to do is one that may not be intuitive right now. And I'll just tell you, type in time and L, timeline. And you'll see down at the bottom over here is add timeline. That's a common one to use. And what a timeline does, it's just basically a little graph of value changes over time. So we're going to call this uh, flickering. Flickering, okay. And again, you don't have to name it anything. It's, you know, only you are ever gonna really see that. Um, but just to be tidy, we've named it Flickering. Okay, so to get into this, we're gonna double click on it. And we're gonna open up this new window over here, our Flickering template, our event graphs right there. We can jump back and forth between these now. We wanna add a new track to this. So we're gonna come up to the track button here and we're gonna click on this and say, add a float track. Remember, a float is just a number with a decimal point in it. So it could be a whole number, seven, or it could be 3,000 points nine four two one whatever um, and we're gonna give this a new name we're just gonna call this intensity and then uh, we're going to go ahead and change the length of this from five seconds five seconds is probably fine but in this case just to make it a little shorter for the tutorial I'm just gonna set that to three seconds and then I'll hit enter remember in any of these numbers that you're adding in these little fields here you want to hit enter to tell it that you're happy with that now what we've got basically right now is this little curve it's not really much of a curve because it's a straight line and we're gonna say all right this is this we need to change the value of this from zero to something else right we could go negative if we wanted to but what we're gonna do is right click on this line and you'll see you can add a key to curve float three over here. So we're gonna add that over there. And we're gonna say the time of this here is gonna be zero. And remember hit enter so it, you know it's happy. Uh, and then the value, we never want our, our campfire to go out. So I'm just gonna set that value to one. So the lowest it can possibly be is a thousand. Remember we set the intensity of that light to a thousand. So uh, unless we go lower than one over here, we're going to, uh, it's always gonna be as bright as it is um, at, by the start. It's only gonna get brighter as it moves up and down. I'm gonna come over here and right click on the other end of this and add another keyframe on this. And I'll just tidy up the time over here and just set that to three and enter. And again, I can leave that value at one. So we're gonna make this a loop. So we want it to start and end at the same value. But now in the middle here, I'm gonna hold the right mouse button down and drag over here so I can center the timeline. 
I'm going to add a whole bunch more points on here to make kind of a zigzag intensity. But this right clicking in is kind of annoying. So let's do a faster way by holding the shift key down. Just hold the shift key down and just click about a dozen more points on here. You don't have to count or whatever. Just kind of do do a bunch more on here. Doesn't really matter exactly where you're clicking them. Come on, something like that. Then we'll do one more over there. And then what you, I want you to do is grab that first one. Let's grab the first one. And then don't worry about what the time is, but for the value, type in 15. Remember, hit enter. That's going to be like the highest one we're going to do. So I'm going to back out here a little bit. Remember, we can right mouse button here to, uh, to zoom in. We can use this little button over here to zoom to fit vertical. So that'll basically put our top one at the top over there. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just going to come down to these little guys, and I'm going to grab every other one. I'm just going to yank them up here to make this kind of like jagged sine wave over here. I'm just going to make a, a variety of the mist. I'm going to grab that guy, pull it up over there. Maybe I'll zoom in her a little bit and uh, so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing. I'm just leaving these guys. And if you wanted to dip a little bit below one, you could. Maybe that will be a spot where it gets slightly darker. We probably won't notice too much of that. Um, but we'll go ahead and just keep on grabbing these here. Oops, I got to click on it and then gra drag it up there. And that looks pretty good. Well, maybe we'll have it go a little, a little darker on that last little moment, up and down and then back. There we go. Okay. So now we've got just like a variety of intensities. Maybe I'll grab one of these points in here and bring that a little bit higher, closer up to the 15, something like that. So basically we're going from, um, and I can click both of these, zoom to both here, and I can see the line uh, a little bit less crunched there. So you can see that it's going from, um, you know, up and down from one to 15 or slightly lower than that as it goes along this timeline. Now, we want this to replay. We want it to play for three seconds and then just start over again and keep on playing. And in order to do that, we've got to hit this little guy, the little loop button. These used to be labeled, but they took the labels off now and they're just icons. So just hover over it and you'll see that little loop indication will pop in there. Just turn that blue and now we've looped it. So now hit that compile button so we know that it is compiled. And then we're going to go back to the event graph. You can close this. We don't really need to come back to this, but you know, we'll just leave it open. It's not hurting anything. I'm going to click on the event graph tab and you'll notice that here in our flickering uh, timeline there's a new pin called intensity so we're going to change the intensity of something what are we changing the intensity of the point light but we have to ha pull this off of the execute pin right we have to say all right execute the next step over here so i'm going to pull off the update i'm going to say are we getting the intensity are we setting the we're setting the intensity so set and then i n and you'll see i don't even need to get much farther than that it's going to go like oh okay i bet you mean set intensity over here. Oh, the intensity of what? The point light. The parentheses is the point light that's up over here. So it's like, oh, okay, yeah, that's exactly what I want. I want the, the intensity, the float of the intensity to be set here. So I'm going to pop that open over here and look what it's done for us. It's added the little reference to the point light for us. It's like, what? I'm changing the intensity of what? The point light. That's what that target is right there. Sometimes that's there automatically if it's a situation like this. Sometimes you got to drag in references. Uh, but right now, here's our new intensity. So right now, it's set to zero, but we're going to drive that with the values that are coming out of our timeline. So as our timeline moves along, it's going to be start at one, and then it's going to go up to 15 after a little bit, and then down to nine, and then up to whatever we, you know, it's going to be driving that number out of there. So I could just click and drag this and pop it right in there. It likes that. It's green. It's green. It's a float to a float, right? It likes that. That's terrific. That would work. We could hit compile. No errors. There's nothing wrong with this, except really you got to think about what it's doing. If I were if I were to throw this in the scene and hit play, you'd be like, is it working? I, I don't see any change because really what we just told it to do is take the intensity of the light, which we set to a thousand, remember, and then wiggle it up and down based on the number coming out of this pin. And that number is one, nine, 15, 12, 10. So the variation is like a thousand and one, a thousand and eleven, a thousand and six, a thousand and. So that tiny little change of the number is just not going to be noticeable. We're just not even going to see it. So what we need to do is multiply that number to change the effect of it. So what I'm going to do is just right click on here and I'm just going to hit the, uh, the multiply button on my uh, my number pad over on the end of my keyboard if you have one of those or you can just type in mult and then just hit enter and that's going to give me this a little multiply so a little times so I'm going to take the times out of this I'm going to plug it in right over there I'm going to plug this end back in over here so it's going to take this number and multiply it but whatever I, whatever I set over here so I'm going to click in that little field backspace and I'm going to set this to a thousand and enter so when it comes out as two it's going to be 2000 added to the to the 1000 so it's going to change the intensity of that much greater so we're really going to see so it's going to be 15 
thousand when at that highest peak at the beginning there it's going to jump way up and then down and then up and down we're really going to see those changes in there that's it that's all the code so when the game begins when we hit play it's going to say oh start playing this what is this this is a number wiggling up and down between 1 and 15 and some bits in between in there and then that number is coming out over here being multiplied by a thousand and it's using that to change the intensity of the light in this blueprint so we're going to hit compile and then we're good to go. I'm going to come back to the main level over here just by clicking on this tab, control and, spa and uh, space bar to pop this into the scene. And I'm going to grab our new BP flicker here. I'm going to put it close to the campfire. Probably want to scooch it up a little bit higher so we get better um, shadows there. Something like that. Doesn't matter exactly where you put it. This is the new one. This is the one that we just made. So now if I hit the play button and jump into the game mode, look, it looks exactly like the previous one. It's doing exactly what it needs to do. We can get up a little bit closer to it. And there we go. And it's going to keep on doing that until I stop playing the game, until I hit the end of the game. And if I accidentally delete that, no problem. It lives down over here. And we're going to just drop in another one. We could add multiple ones into the scene. If I had, you know, torches flickering in various spots and then I hit play, you can see now I've got like two points of light or whatever. So these are super useful. It's also a way to kind of store a thing like, oh, I want a flickering torch in my hallway here. We could have added, added a, a torch uh, a mesh to our viewport. So it's not just the invisible light, but it's actually, you know, a torch or a lantern or whatever. Every time I want a lantern with a flickering light, I just drag it into my scene from over here. Do notice that the little asterisk right there means it's not saved. So we want to right click on that and save or save all. So you notice that one is gone. My first one still has the asterisk over there, which means it's not saved. So it will ask you when you quit the game, you want to save this stuff and you say yes um, if you do. But that's all there is to it. That's the beginning of your first blueprint. So it's just this little bit of code here that's telling uh, Unreal to do something inside of the game.